Hi guys, back again to my series of um, Hunt for the Profitable Strategies. What we're going to be doing in this series is basically across YouTube, we're going to look for good strategies that we find, and then we're going to code them into MQL, and I'll share the coding so that we can learn how the MQL coding works. And basically by coding, we take out any subjective human element so that when we run it, uh, the rules are followed 100% and we can automate it. So today we're going to be looking at the one minute scalping strategy just using 50 EMA to 100 EMA by TradePro which already has close to half a million views. So let's get to meta editor and start coding. Before we start coding, if if because I'm not going to be explaining too much within the code itself because I want to keep the video below 15 minutes, but most of the functions I will create separate list and I'm calling it MQL how to series. It's a separate playlist where I'm defining where I'm putting more details of what every function looks like. So if you don't understand something, go to the MQL uh, how to series and see if there's a video which, which can explain it better. I want to keep the video below 15 minutes. So here I've created a folder for Trade Pro because there are a lot of strategies on Trade Pro that I want to code. Uh, so let's create a folder for that. Then we go and we create a new EA. And let's call it the name of the, the video. And I'll leave the link below in the description to the video as well. And then we click next. And here we have our free temp, our, our opening template. I'll clean it up so that we are left with only three functions, the initialization function. So all the codes here are gonna be run on the start of the EA. The initialization function, all the codes here are gonna be run when the EA is, is stopping or exiting and on tick. So that's where all the codes will be run on every tick in MQL. Now to quickly go to the strategy and I'll leave the link below so that you can go and check out the video. It's basically about when there is a crossover of 50 EMA over 200 EMA. What we are interested in is in the first touchdown of the EMA. We don't want the second, the third, the fourth, the first touchdown, which in this case happens here. So the price comes from above. The EMA has recently moved up 50 over 200 and then the price comes and closes below the, the 50. So there's a touchdown. What we don't want okay fine let's we'll come to it later and then we wait for the first candle that closes on the other side so again back up on back up above the ema 50 and we enter here we set the stop loss to atr below and we take the take profit as 1.5 uh, to the to the stop loss so one to 1.5 risk to reward ratio now if if there was if the, there is a crossover and the price comes down and let's hypothetically say it comes down here and touches the first time but it comes and closes below the 200 ema then the valid the setup is invalid we don't want the, the candles to, or the price to come to come and close below the 200 ema the flip side is for the the sell signal uh, you can go check out the video in order to keep this video 15 minutes this is how much i can explain link is in the description so here are here are the rules of the strategy. You can pause the video and you can read them if you want. But we'll move on to the, the coding now. Because we will be doing trading operations, so we need a reference to the trade class C, C trade, which is basically in this include folder, this file trade.mqh, where all of these codes are now available to us by referencing to it saying include. I'll leave. Uh, there's an. I'll make another video and put into the M MQL how to series. So everything you don't understand here, you can probably find another video in MQL how to series, which explains it more. But we want the trade. We want the C trade uh, function. We want the position info and we want the order info, and we're passing it on to trade, POS, and ORD functions or variables. Now in our EA, we will be using three, uh, two EMAs and. And ATR so we need to create handles for it again a separate video on how to create handles and how to use uh, indicators in a separate video into in, in MQL how to series so we create an EMA 50 handle EMA 200 handle and ATR handle and we create a, 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 a variable an array variable where we can pass on the information from these handles into the, uh, that 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 uh, that variable so that we can use it now that we have defined these handles, we need to initialize them and we want to initialize them on the start of the year. So we put them into initialization function by assigning functions to these handles. So for example, EMA 50 handle, what we're saying is that it's a moving average on current symbol on a time frame that we will define later. 
it's a 50 period and it's a mode EMA and it will use the price median high low divided by two. Same goes for the 200, which is to period 200 and then for the ATR on current simple on time frame with 14 period. Now that we have initialized, we should also deinitialize it on exit, which is a good practice to release it from the memory. So we deinitialize them here. The next thing we're going to need is we need some inputs from the user and we define them as input variables so that the user can input them. The first one we need is time frame. So I'm calling it period current so that when you apply it on a chart, you can apply it to one minute chart, five minute chart, 15 minute chart, whatever you will select on the chart, it will be applied to that. Then we need a magic number to identify this EA and there's a separate video on how to use magic numbers and why to use magic numbers. And then we need a lot size and we'll keep it to 0.01 .01 for now. Now that we have put the input magic number here, we should initialize it as well by coming to the initialization function and using the trade variable that we have created to say set the export magic number to input magic number. This way now we can identify every trade that this E is going to place. Next, I'm going to need some variables to pass on the information. So I'm creating an EMA X1 and X2. EMA 50 X1 X2. X1 is where I'll store the value of the last candles 50 EMA and this where I will be storing the value of the last from last. Same goes for 200 and why I'm creating two last bar and last from last bar because what I want to check in the condition is that the last from last bar was below the 200 EMA and then the last bar came above so then it's a new crossover and then we'll need the ATR in order to set the stop loss. And I'm going to create some bool conditions, which are the true or false variables, which are going to check for crossover to the upside, to the downside. And if there is a price touch down or price touch up, I'm starting them as false. So let's now head to our on tick function where we will be doing all the condition testing and checking. But I don't want these scores to run on every tick because we're going to be checking for whether the EMA has crossed over or if the price has come down on every new bar according to the strategy. So I'm going to create a function here calling it as is new bar. And there is a separate video in the MQL how to series on how to check for a new bar. So this is how I'm going to create this function. And then I'm going to check for it here by in the on tick function saying that if it's not a new bar, then exit, then return meaning do not run any code below. Just come here. If it's not a new bar, by checking it here, if it's not a new bar, then exit the function. So every code that's going to be run below is going to be run only on a new bar. Okay, so on a new bar, the first thing we want to do is we want to copy the information from our handles of on, on EMAs into our variables. And this we do by using the copy buffer function. And I'll create a video in the MQL how to series on how to use how to pass on this information so you have more details there but what we're basically doing is we're passing on the information from handle that we had created on ema50 into the indicator buffer variable that we had created this one and then from that because it's an array so i can store more than one value and i'm catching two values because i want last bar and last from last bar so i'm passing on two values to this and then from indicator buffer array variable i'm passing on the first value to the first candle or the emx1 and then the second value which is the last from last bar to emx2 same i do for the 200 ema as well and then for the atr i only need the one value so i only call for one value and then i pass it on to the atr function or atr variable the last thing i'm gonna need is the opening of the candle and the close of the last candle so I create these variables and I pass on the information on the opening of the candle of the last candle and the closing of the last candle because I want to check whether the, the candle last candle opened above the 50 MA and came and closed below to check for our conditions. So now we can check our conditions. So the first one is we're checking whether there's a crossover. So we say if the new crossover to the upside is false. So only check if it's false. If it's true already, then don't check. And then if the EMA 50 of the last from last candle was below the EMA 200 of last from last candle, and then it came above the EMA of two of the last can on the last candle, then there is a crossover. So then we, we, we assign the value no new crossover up to true 
and in case the new crossover down was still true for some stupid reason let's change it to false and the reverse conditions for the new crossover to the downside once we have the crossover we need to look for a touchdown so if if the crossover is already true to the upside and then the opening of the candle was above 50 EMA of the last candle and the closing of the last candle was below the 50 that means the price has come down and it has touched uh, the, the 50 EMA so then the touchdown is true and in case touch up was true for some stupid reason it's false the reverse goes for the sell uh, for the for the touchdown to the bottom or, or the reverse for the sell signal now if the crossover has happened and the touchdown has happened then we still need to check that the, the close does not close below the 200 EMA because then our our setup is invalid so if it was true everything and then the close it the price closed below the 200 EMA then just set it back again to false we're not interested anymore and same goes for the reverse now that we have set up all our condition variables now we can check whether or not we should enter a trade and this we do basically by coming here and going okay well if the new crossover up is true so there is a new crossover and that the price has touched down is still true and it hasn't become false so the price hasn't gone below 200 and then the close of the last candle comes back above the 50 EMA so meaning it has returned above the EMA so our conditions are met but then additionally we check that there is no position open by saying positions total is less than one more details in the MQL how to series so if these conditions are met then there's a valid setup for a buy what we need is the entry so our entry is on the close of the last candle because it has come above and closed our stop loss is going to be whatever is the entry minus the ATR times two and then we want our TP to be wherever the entry is which is the close of the previous candle plus the distance between the entry and the stop loss times 1.5 because we want our risk to reward to be 1.5 and then we can go ahead and we can say buy by passing on the lot size 0 0.01 symbol on the current symbol there is no we don't need to send the price because we're making a market order and we want stop loss and TP as this and that and there is no comment more in the MQL how to see this and then because we have taken the condition so now the new crossover is false and the touchdown is false so that we don't do this the, and we don't open the trade on the same because we are only interested in the first touchdown not in the later one so we already set it to false and the reverse is true for the sell orders so basically if the crossover down is true touch up is true basically it's, it's the same but reverse so you can pause the video and look at it so now that we have the entire code let's compile it and we have some errors and the errors are coming from here because the in i in the input should be small so let's change that and compile again and we have no error so let's go ahead and run it so here i'm running it on m1 and in the input we are running it on current time frame with a 0.01 lot size so now we're starting to run it and I'm going to pause the video when the trade happens. So there's a crossover and there you go. So there was a crossover to the downside and the price came and closed below. And then it went. So here it closed below and then it went and came close uh, close above or close below it closed above the 50 EMA and then close below the 50 EMA so our conditions were met and then we place a trade now I'll pause the video and here we are with a new touch up with a new crossover to the upside and here the price has come below so the touchdown has happened and now we wait for the price to go up and we had a trade when the price went up the the TP was here and the stop loss was here so the EA works. You can go test it by yourself. Try it on different time frames. By changing the time frame here, you can change and, and then run it on different time frames. If I modify, I'll come back with the second part where I'll talk about the modification. But for now, this is how the EA works. Test it out and until next time.